Uh huh. Like, all right, some of us go outside the car. We get in the car. She's like, you got half a cigarette on you? Did you put the cigarette out? Hey, pregnant women will sniff out everything like an old bloodhound. Hey, she used to hate that shit. Yeah, that was so. Uh, all right. So, uh, welcome back, you guys. It's yep. the Faculty Lounge Podcast episode. Ha! <laughs> For y'all that don't speak no languages like me, it's episode eighteen, man. John Jay over here. We uh, so maybe last year we was old enough to buy squares. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this year you got to be twenty one. Right. But at one point in time, eighteen was old enough to buy squares. So uh, are you? Are I you? Guess I'm Elton. Oh, so you're not Matt Black no more. I'm. You know, I'm. I'm whoever I want to be. You know. I guess that would make you anonymous. Yeah. You know, that's the whole reason behind being anonymous. Uh-huh. Is that you don't know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody knows me. Everywhere I go, I know everybody, but nobody knows me. So I could be Matt Black. Or I could be Easy Street. Or I could be Elton. Yeah, I've been knowing you for almost 20 years, and I feel like I don't even know you. Right. I know uh-huh. something about you. Like, I feel like I know your child more than I know you. <laughs> <laughs> See, because he's pure. He's blank. He's just there, mm-hmm. you know? And that's that's what we all start off at, you know what I'm saying? But then... The blank canvas. That's so artistic, man. Yeah, you know, but then stuff happens <laughs> to you, you know? Whether your cousin beats you up every time she sees you, or they call you a lame on the block, or you, you know say your parents pass away at a young age, or... Man, the block just gets so overrated the older you get. Yeah, man. I wish I could beat it into the young kids and the teenagers that being ghetto is not cool. Yeah, it's definitely you know? not like, a good thing. Especially when you weren't raised ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were put through good schools and you ate at the dinner table... But after dinner, you went out and tried to be something that you weren't raised to be, that you weren't home trained to be. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's not cool. And it, I feel like people don't realize that till they're sitting in jail. And it's like, fuck. What? They told me not to do this. And this is where I'm at now. But some people never learn. Yeah. Some people were really raised perfectly, mm-hmm. but decided to go that way. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I wonder that all the time about the the overprivileged uh, white kid that decides to slum it and go to the hood and has yeah. all black friends. Yeah, like, like this this one girl I know, she sent me an invitation to her kid's birthday party. Right. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. you know? Makes sense. Like, why are you still talking to me? Yeah. You know? I don't like kids' birthday parties. I'm going to just say bagel. Oh. <laughs> and it all comes together. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, we got things to talk about this week, man. Yeah, man. Where should we start? Do we start with Donnie? Donnie or Danny or... Do- <laughs> <laughs> we can start with Donnie or Danny or, or right, Harry. So, so what happened to Donnie? All right, so Donnie, his whole clique is turning over on him, right? Yeah. And That's crazy. Immunity. We, yeah. we witnessing corporate snitching right now. Yeah. Presidential levels of snitching. It's, it's- like power. And you snitch it on the president. Yeah. Like, to the government. So it's like he could potentially, if you play his cards right, he can get all of these people hit. Yeah. Like, one day they just come up missing. <laughs> With invisible jets. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see you. That's yeah. the great he thing just gotta, it. He just got to get the Space Force to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Space Force. The Space Force. They just kill everybody and go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So Pharrell was tweaking. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, that'd be one pie, one fry, and one large coffee. But he said it like in six different accents, and he was tweaking, right? Uh-huh. And then his next post was like, so they found a river on Mars. You know, and I'm just thinking, oh, he had Neptune. He's supposed to say spacey stuff like that. Yeah. But they actually found oh, yeah, a body of that. water on Mars. Yeah, they found some on the moon, too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what if Mar- what if Martians have been living underground all this time? That's the exaggeration of self importance that we humans share. Mm-hmm. We think it's all about us. Uh, it's really about the trees and the the dirt and the bugs. Yeah, see, because I feel like like beetles run the world. I was thinking this the other, uh, maybe this morning, the last night. I was thinking, 
before humans used to communicate to each other over the internet uh -huh. and telephone communication, like we used the earth to communicate with each other. Yeah. Like all human communication went through the earth to get to another human, you know? And like, yeah, the earth matters so much more than the human race. Yeah. Like they say black lives matter and blue lives matter. I say human lives don't matter when it comes Pretty to the much. grand scheme of earth. Pretty much. You I'd know? much rather have a tree than uh, more people. Yeah. More trees and less people. Yeah. yeah. Um, we should put that on a shirt. More trees, less people. That's like a double entendre. <laughs> Don't ask me how. <laughs> but uh, back to uh, Donnie. Yeah, it's corporate snitching. It's right. So what I was thinking about, I was thinking about the scariest scenario. Now, you know, he went on the news and said that if he get impeached, the stock market's a crash and people would be very poor, as he put it, right? The scariest part to me is President Pence. That's, that's, that's scary. always been the scariest part. That's scary. You know? Like, man. Because you just seen the Black Klansmen. So there is no infiltrating the president. Mm -hmm. So now I was Googling David Duke. Yeah. It was David Duke the governor of California? Or is that a different David Duke? I don't think he was the governor of California. I know he's a politician. So he, like, he actually made I think he held. Politics. I think he held public office at some point. But he is a politician, yeah. Damn, yeah, that's crazy. Cause you remember, I remember back in the day, the GDs was all like, "We're gonna send you to school, and you're gonna be a cop, yeah, and then you're gonna come and work in our neighborhood and mm -hmm. keep us cool. You're gonna let us know what's going on, growth and development. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you're gonna be a lawyer, and you're gonna be, you're still gonna be a GD, but you're gonna be a GD lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, or a cop, or whatever we need you to be for the game. Right. That's why they mm -hmm. locked Hoover up because he was getting GDs to vote. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man, it's, yeah. yeah, that's deep, so, so, fucking just, just the, the KKK on some, actually doing it, I can't, you know? I can't, I, and it's like, you see the Trump thing, it's like, we're seeing the residual effects of having a president like Trump, right, like, Trump didn't go out and say, all oh, my Klansmen step up, but, yeah, but that's exactly what happened, right, now, imagine if we have a president that is that kind of person. We know it, like a and Mike he Pence. he actually says it. The, like what could what could be? I wonder if something could be done if that was the case. You think her could be a quit? Or you think she'll still be talking that good? Man, she is a good talker. She talk. I look. She be man. I I'm gonna say something controversial. Don't say but it. But man, her talk, her spit. She up there with Pimp C. How she could just, just dribble. Didn't she create? Around. Didn't she create create that term uh, alternative facts? Yeah, that that the was cold. News. That was cold. Alternative, alternative facts. facts is cold. Like she she cold with it, man. I don't. I wouldn't say Pimp C, but maybe like a yeah, I'm like a Snoop, uh, a somebody who's cold with the wordplay. I would use somebody else. I wouldn't say like an E40 because uh, I was listening to Crit yesterday. Uh -huh. He got a crazy song with E40. Yeah. He got a crazy song with Lupe Fiasco. That shit go hard. Yeah, Crit is dope, man. Yeah, man. Crit is dope. But yeah, Huckabee, Sarah Sanders, whatever you want to call her. Mm -hmm. She um, man, she be she be using the words. I mean, shit. It seemed like it's 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 always been propaganda in politics. But it's like now we can see that shit. It's she like good. The, if she was a boy, I would say that boy good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, man, that Pence presidency. That's that's some scary so shit. Scary man. Yeah. So it's like we'll be begging to have Trump back if Pence is the president. Because like. You see Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was like a lap dog to Obama. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Even Al Gore with Clinton. I was just about to you say Al said. Gore. You know he created the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but man, Pence, I feel like Pence is way better put together than Donald Trump. What you mean better put together? Like he's a more solid human being. Mm -hmm. Like when he wants something to get done, he's going to get it done. Unilaterally. You gotta get her done. Get her done. Unilaterally. Yeah. <laughs> so I I you know, we have popular opinions and stuff like that, right? I think about Obama 
right? This was the first real election for us, like for our generation of humans, mm -hmm. because when we were able to vote, it was Obama. It was like no brainer, right? I, we could have voted for Bush, right? No, we yeah. still in high school. Oh four. Oh four. We were old enough to vote. Really? I was old enough to vote in 04. He was born in 85. Yeah. Yeah. So 03, September 03, you turned. That was Bush Carey, right? 04. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. voted for, the, for, for we voted I, for. We, I've never voted in a presidential election. Uh -huh. The first time I ever voted was last year in mm -hmm. the preliminary, in the. In the primaries. Election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That was the first time I voted in my life. Yeah, so go out and vote though, because uh, even if you don't vote on a major scale, mm -hmm. at least vote for your aldermans and your the congressmen in your district and your mayor, mm -hmm. like the people that you can actually go touch and like talk to. You know, like let them know that you vote for them. The people that, that can actually because, make a difference for you. Yeah, in your yeah. community, like yeah. that's who you really, really should vote for. You mm -hmm. know, like. I guess, I guess the presidents, you know, they all, it's a conspiracy theory. They all already been chosen and they're going to be the president, whether you like it or not. But you can vote for the people who run your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was talking about. It's like this was the first election. It wasn't like a no-brainer. So like Bush Kerry, of mm -hmm. course we're going to vote for uh, Kerry, right? Mm -hmm. Uh I don't know, Bush Bush don't look that bad now. I mean now, yeah, and then Obama. Obama was a no brainer. Yeah, man. R. I. P. John McCain, man. Because yeah. just because I, I I said it right before we started the show. Mm -hmm. I feel like if it was anybody else, anybody that who might have even been just younger, like somebody who we didn't think might have passed away in office. Uh. You know what I'm saying? They Obama might not have won. You know? Yeah. But I mean, John, Mc yeah, yeah, like John McCain, he had the whole war hero thing going for himself. Yeah. Like you know? he was, a, I guess, the model American. He was just really, really old. Yeah. Like that's why Ron Paul will never be president because he's just way too old. Yeah. Like I'm surprised Trump got to be the president. The man ain't Trump yeah. like 74, but 72 I mean, or something like that. Trump is also in the 11 heart transplant club. True. Like he can he can stay alive as long <laughs> as he me. wants to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. On that note, nah, he's not too old. Yeah. You know. So I think you think if they start the impeachment now, because mm -hmm. what? How long has it been? Well, it's going on two years now. Yeah. If they start it now, I wonder because I mean that's a process, right? If they do impeachment, time. an impeachment takes years. Yeah. So. Will they be able to impeach him before he's done with his term as president? I think with the way the world is today, they will break the law to impeach him faster. I feel like, I don't know, I saw a time traveler came back from the year 2075. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he said Trump wins again. Now, I can see if Trump ran again, I see him winning again. If mm. he ran for a second term, I see him winning. I mean, what has he done positive for the American people. Like, cause the whole Trump presidency so for far- For the country or for the people? For, I guess for the, for the American people. Yeah. Like for the actual people of America. Cause farmers are going through it with all these trade embargoes. Uh -huh. You got the working class people who don't have health insurance anymore. Mm -hmm. You got the stock market just volatile. You got, you know, so like everything. Well, the market has been on a bear run for a while. I mean, it's everything is just doesn't seem. It don't seem right. Yeah. Like everything seems like almost artificial to me. And then the whole, I feel like the whole presidency has been about who got him into office, mm -hmm. you know, or this scandal or that scandal or spending all this time at Mar-a-Lago or spending, um, getting his lawyers to pay off. Stormy, yeah, yeah, Stormy, and there's another one. So right. I'm gonna just say, girls, right? You know what I'm saying? Or getting like Russia, or like it's just scandal after scandal. But there's no actual positive moving forward. But is is that is that Trump or is that the media that doesn't like Trump? Because you keep in mind, he publicly denounced the media. 
So it's yeah. like now the people that control the news have a yeah. chip on their shoulder for Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I give you that much. I give you that the media doesn't like him, so mm-hmm. the media is going to spin it. But there's it's it's hard to spin a positive story in a bad way, and have everybody agree with you. Well, I mean, look at Chicago though. Like they paint Chicago as an ongoing war zone, but. We live here, and it's a beautiful city, and there's lots of positivity everywhere. And when you see tourists come to Chicago, they say, man, I could see myself living here. Yeah, like mm-hmm. like they make it look like we all savages, but that's far from the case. Yeah. So the, the media can spin positivity negatively all they want. Like, we didn't hear anything about uh, Cop These Shoes. Yeah. We didn't hear nothing about it. Shout yeah. out to Vic Mensa, by the yeah. way. Shout Vic Mensa Vic is Mensa. killing it. Man. King Louis too. What King Louis do? He's a part of the Cop These Shoes thing. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah man. I, I heard that. Well, I read the article that you sent me. And mm-hmm. It was just like a bunch of um, athletes and actors and people were just donating hella shoes. And they wanted to remain anonymous. Mm-hmm. Like, they're doing it. But don't say it was me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's beautiful. And that's crazy because... Um, to, I, I like I like that because celebrities like to well I mean I don't think it's the celebrity themselves but the machine behind the celebrity always likes to attach the celebrity's face to a cause. Yeah. This is showing that it really is about something. Like this matters. Mm-hmm. Like so so I guess it was about so it wasn't just the cops. Mm-hmm. It was the railroads and the cops that were trying to detour people from hitting the trains uh-huh like it was truly a scandal this was a real scandal and the three people that got arrested they let them go mm-hmm. and the railroad companies apologized for arresting them and for setting up the sting in yeah. the first place i mean so how do you feel about shit like that like them sting operations like bait car did you see the bait car in chicago no and the, well, you get in the car you try to start it and then it locks up on you uh-huh and then, they had a whole show called Bait Car. Yeah, I feel like you shouldn't take things that aren't yours. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. But when the things are put there, you know, and shiny and sparkly and hey, with a big come take me sign. I mean, and I, then you take it and you get in trouble for it. You know? Because we've all been in a situation where I was in a situation myself. Where I went and sat at my table in a restaurant, it's a hundred dollar bill on the floor. Mm-hmm. I pick up this hundred dollar bill. I'm like, I could put this in my pocket. What did you do? I left it on the floor. And then a man came to me and said, "Man, did you find any money? Cause I lost a hundred dollars." I'm like, "It's right there." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was always cautious of is this right here because it's a setup. Yeah, it's like, don't get me wrong. Doing bad things is bad. Like if you take, how would you have felt if another person came by and just picked it up and walked away? Karma. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna get the universe is gonna give me what I need to get. I feel like I would have definitely put it in my pocket. But if he would have came up to me and asked me, I would have definitely went in my pocket. Right. Uh, Like I definitely. I would have gave you know, it back to him. I like, wouldn't have said, no, nah, it's mine now. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I came in here with a $100 bill in my pocket. See, right. Like, it, I wouldn't have done that. They're keeping the lie alive, right. Yeah. But the, mm-hmm. the the whole bait situation, that's that's nah, was, that's unfair policing, though, man. Speaking of $100 bills, I remember one time I went to the barbershop. Uh-huh. And I don't know if you ever seen the little like, tax return refund things. And it's like a $100 bill on one side and words on the other side. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. So they folded yeah, it Yeah, I know up. what you're talking about. Get the stop. They it. folded it up and put it right in front of the door. Wow. Inside the barbershop. Yo. And wow. I'm sitting there waiting on my cut. And um everybody walk in. Oh, hey, it's a hundred dollars on the floor. It's a hundred dollars on the floor. And then I open it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm putting this right back. Mm-hmm. They put it right back. One dude come in, he step on it. <laughs> oh, that's the first thing. You're gonna leave that foot right there as long as you got to. <laughs> And then he you gonna stand up, in that damn spot, put it in his pocket, and he's swearing to the whole bar. Already seven or eight people already didn't came in and picked <laughs> it up and put it back. He's swearing up and down that he no, he actually went in his pocket and dropped some money, 
picked it all up together. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So we know you stealing and yeah. you're a horrible person because uh, even though it's fake. Uh, it took a good five, six minutes yeah. to convince this man to open it up and see that it was not a real $100 right. bill. Right. Like he's not going to open it up because he's trying to convince you that he don't have it. Yeah. What an idiot. <laughs> so like, I just had a thought. So, all right, let me get let me get a solid stance from you. Is it okay for police to use bait tactics in policing? Do you think that's fair? I want to get your answer because I have a very interesting scenario that I want to present. See, I would say no. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm thinking about like murder. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking like police come drop off a box of guns in the hood and people start dying because they wanted to see if people were going to take the guns. Now, you know why I asked you that question. It makes me think about one show in particular to catch a predator. Well, the ultimate bait tactic. Yeah, that is like they baiting these perverts in to get perverts off the street. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm yeah. saying there's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. great that they do to catch a predator. Well, I mean, yeah, see, that's why I was like, no, because in certain instances, mm -hmm. it can go horribly wrong. Right. You put guns in the streets. People are going to kill people. I mean, that because... whole concept of policing people. It's yeah. going to be flawed no matter what you yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, you put, you go to a basketball court where people need basketball shoes mm -hmm. to play basketball and you leave, leave a, a truck, truck full, full of, of basketball, basketball shoes, shoes right. across from a basketball court. Mm -hmm. They're going to take basketball shoes to play basketball. Now that's just wrong because who are you trying to catch? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Who's, who really plays basketball outside at courts? Right. Teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Young kids who probably don't have a criminal record yet. Yeah. So you're just trying to get people criminal records mm -hmm. at this point. Right, pretty much. And right. that's the problem that I got with like, policing. If you don't have a criminal record yet, we got to get you one. Yeah, like let's right. get you in the system. How can we get you in the system today? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Welcome. Let me get Welcome you in this 2018 CDD. system. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like that's that's... You know, that's wrong. Man. That's very wrong. That's very wrong. You know, like if you're already in the system, you're a known predator and you out here trying to touch on little people or you, you know what I'm saying, you a known drug dealer and mm -hmm. they, a cop walk up to you with a $20 bill and buy two blows off of you. Yeah, that's okay. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But don't just, don't set bait trucks up to right, cause think, bring people into the system. Think about know? teenage us. What? We gone. Yeah. We gone. It's just a truck full of shoes. We gone. We've been snatching shit for years. <laughs> <laughs> and they just going to leave it here? What? They want us to snatch it. Yeah. They're, they're asking us, hey, come over here. Like, man, who going to tell a, a teenager? It's like the little marshmallow test where they put the marshmallow in front of the little kid. You can eat it now or wait 10 minutes and you get two. Yeah. It's like doing that. It's like, why... What teen is going to say no to a free pair of off-whites? Yeah, you know? You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. crazy. So, right. yeah, that, yeah. salute to Vic Mensa, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you for being you, man. Yeah, continue to be you, man. Continue to give us stuff to talk about. Good stuff to talk about about yeah. our city, man. Yeah, man. See? Yeah. So now we got Vic on one side, right? <laughs> <laughs> is it time already? Man. It is time. And then on the other side of the coin, we got... Damn, Daniel. Rainbow Dan. Rainbow Danny. Daniel Hernandez. Daniel Hernandez. <laughs> For y'all who don't know, I ain't going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you either. <laughs> but you want to know who Daniel Hernandez is. Yeah. <laughs> but for... for Research and marketing purposes, we're calling him Rainbow Dan. <laughs> yeah, Rainbow Dan. All right, so Rainbow Danny has struck again. Yeah. And he strikes one of hip-hop's most valuable treasures. I think what he did this time was just ludicrous. <laughs> you just knocking him dead today, man. <laughs> you got that, sir. Uh, how dare you, man? Yeah, man. Hey. 
This nigga ludicrous and lost more money than you earned. <laughs> like, when I say lost, I mean fell out of his pocket. <laughs> I thought you was talking about Conjo. Hell. <laughs> Voted world's least drank cognac. <laughs> Boy, Conjure should have had a picture of Angel Mama on it. That shit was so sweet and nasty. Man. Man, but uh, yeah. Was right up there with Virginia Black. Don't buy that shit. Do not buy Virginia Black. Shouts out to Drake. Though, Shouts out to Drake, to but. the hospital and canceling the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, he did do he a good thing. Day. He made everybody's day by yeah. watching him make that yeah. girl's day. Look, so but, before we go to Rainbow Dan, I wanted to say something real quick about Drake, right? Uh -huh. So I ask people all the time what they thought about Scorpion because it was it was different for Drake. But everybody keeps saying that's what I expected from Drake, right? Yeah. What does that mean, though? Like a solid project, a good project. It's, it's not bad music. Like he doesn't put out bad music. Yeah, you know, it's but like, like when people say that's what I expect from Drake, I feel like they faulting him for being good. No, like what's unexpected from Drake is a a Chicago feature. You know, like put Chief Keef on a song, put Lupe Fiasco on a song, do a song with fucking you know a motherfucker like Crit or a motherfucker like you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah a non. Oh, I get what you're saying. It was it was. It's, a, it's the it, it was typical of him. Yeah. Even though it was a lot of good songs, it was typical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do a when song people... with Sia or do a song with Taylor Swift or you know, go outside of the box and you know, try something different. Like I mean he always he genre skips. Right, he jumps know? way, he's a wave rider. Yeah. 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 He he's done the Jamaican, then he's right. done the, the bounce. Yeah. And then you know? the London. Yeah. But he's good at it's staying in his lane. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, get somebody out there who's not like you. You know? That's what I say. Hmm. That's That would be like, oh, shit, Drake did that. See, thank you for clearing that up for me. Because mm -hmm. I really was thinking people were slighting him for being good. No, he's, he's good at what he does. Uh -huh. But he doesn't really try anything new. Right. You know, but I mean, why? What if he did a song to... with Ray Bodan? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, man. Yeah, me too, man. Dude, hey, hey so, all right. He, ludicrous. Yeah, man. Ludicrous. Ludicrous went on Wild and Out. Yeah. They had a, um. But I mean, what he, what he said wasn't bad, though. I mean, it was true. <laughs> it's kind of disrespectful. How? Because nobody wants to sign Nick Cannon as a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but it wasn't disrespectful. It was nothing wrong with but it. I mean, but who wants to be signed by Ludacris? Like, you see what happened to I twenty, I twenty, Chingy, Shauna, Shauna. Like, he yeah. rapes people. You know, two chains. Wow, he, two chains paid a hundred thousand or some shit to like that. Get out of the deal. To get out of the deal. Uh -huh. All right, two. Ch I remember when Two Chains was in Chicago doing verses for three dollars, <laughs> like just to get out that deal. Man, yeah. <laughs> you remember that? Like, I don't. It was all at Studio Eleven. Like Two Chains was just all, all right. Around. I do remember. Yeah, I do two remember. Chains was in the city for like six months, just recording, doing whatever with whoever. Yeah, he did his thing. So, Ludacris went on Wild and Out. Mm -hmm. They had a a, a Rainbow Dan look alike. Yeah, and Rain and uh, Rainbow Dan asked, "Would you sign me or Nick Cannon?" Mm -hmm. And Luda said, "I sign Nick Cannon because don't nobody know how long Rainbow Dan gonna be around." Yeah, and it's not about his um, staying current or his validity in the rap game. It's about somebody's gonna kill this little boy. Yeah, you know, I don't want to like, sign it's him. It's so and give disrespectful. Him 10 million, then they kill him next week. I'm not gonna say what That's he said. Conjure all over again. Like the words that he used is so disrespectful. I'm not going to say it. I'm not even going to play the video because uh, uh. it's like, that's very disrespectful, but it's my personal belief that Ludacris will beat the skin off a lot of people. Like this yeah. man is in supreme shape and he could fight. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he'll go there though. I, I feel like Ludacris is just because Ludacris. When I think of Ludacris, I think of, a millionaire in a room full of billionaires. Mm -hmm. You know, like he ain't got time to be out here on some street shit at all. He's not gonna do that. 
So let me ask you this: Do we get music from Ludacris? Do we no. get a Do we get a response musically? No. I think no, Ludacris. I not, I, uh, Ludacris, but Ludacris has been in beef before. Yeah. Like the whole thing with Ti. He is a real battle rapper, I and mean, he, he got he got down on Stump on Young Buck song Stump. Yeah. When he was coming, when he was going at Tip. Yeah. Boy. But I, I mean, you can understand what he's saying though. Yeah. So it's not fair. Right, it's it's kind of not fair, but it's like you know how hip hop is, man. You can't just say something to me and I not I not say nothing. The only the like only, when Drake didn't respond to Joe Budden, I feel like you lose when you don't respond to somebody, especially somebody like Joe with the lyrical ability to be able to compete. Uh, speaking of Joe Budden, uh-huh. on that T Pain Everything Must Go mixtape, mm-hmm. he got a song with Joey and Joe. You know what? I haven't listened to it because I can't find it. It's on that piff or something? Yeah, I found it on YouTube. Yeah. I listened to his new joint with Gucci. Yeah, that's on there too. That's hard. Uh, that's hard. That's all right. I, Th- man, this, look. I can see why he had... So he said that he was... He kept going into the studio listening to all these songs. Uh-huh. And he couldn't work on anything new because he just... Every time he went to the studio, right. he was listening to He said to that in songs. the Joe Button interview yeah. too, didn't he? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now I, I can see why. You know, like the songs aren't epiphany mm-hmm. or three rings mm-hmm. or you know like i didn't like epiphany epiphany was the shit went better than three rings no nah. three but, rings was amazing yeah but these songs they're good songs they're solid they they'll grow on you mm-hmm. but it's not like the first time you hear it you gotta hear it again yeah you know what I'm saying? that's how i felt about harry harry <laughs> harry yeah. tubbs y'all harry tubbs, y'all. Oh, harry tubbs. Harry tubbs. Shouts out to Cardi B for just <laughs> shitting on Harry Tug. Hey. <laughs> hey. hey, shouts out to Travis Scott for the number for one album. For the number album. one album in the country. <laughs> Astro World. Uh, what? Hey, boy, this is the most shameless, uh, 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 what's the word? I'm arrogant, outlandish, inappropriate. <laughs> Kind of a sore loser mentality for not losing sore that I've winner. ever right. Charlemagne said it the best. Right, sore, sore winner. winner. Come like on, Harry, come on, Harry. <laughs> All right, so Harry Tubbs, aka Queen, <laughs> um, said that she is the new Harriet Tubman. Yeah, and then went on to give Billboard the cocksucker of the day award yeah. and Travis Scott the whole ass nigga of the day award. Yeah. But now, is an award valid if it comes from the donkey of the day? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ki- hey you're war. killing him, man. <laughs> you're making me laugh, man. <laughs> I don't think donkeys have... <laughs> Donkeys, donkeys got hoofs. <laughs> oh, man, the golden break. hoof award. <laughs> <laughs> the hoof sucker, hoof sucker of the day. Oh man, so so how how appropriate is it that Rainbow Dan and Harry Tubbs are in the spotlight for the same thing at the same time after doing the song Fifi together? Yeah, is it strategic, man? Is there a method to the madness, which is Harry Tubbs and Queen Radio? So you said it was weird, all these rollouts. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, rollouts are definitely weird in 2018. So is this a, one of those weird rollouts that we're seeing? <sighs> but for what, though? Is is uh, Rainbow Dan dropping something? I mean, he is. His song's supposed to come out tonight on Power. Look, I have a confession to a... make. I've never listened to a full Rainbow Dan song. Like all the way through. Uh, I've tried. Uh, impossible. Impossible. It's just so bad. You know who they compare him to? Uh, Onyx. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fredro Star should be very upset. Oh man! Shouts out to Onyx. Yeah. Shouts They're out really to really doing them, that music justice the right way. Like New York scream music. Mm-hmm. If that's what you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? The raspy voice screaming loud. It was like, it was punk music. It was punk pop, punk hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. 
At first, they were saying that he got his style from Chief Keef. You know, Chief Keef is only like what, 23? Yeah, he's a young man. 23, 20, he just yeah. turned like 23, 24. Yeah. And that joint, oh, by the way, legend. shout out to Chief Keef. That joint, uh, Catch Up on the Swervo Project. Oh, yeah. Oh, that man, that's hard. dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Shouts out to Chief. Shouts out to, um. Herbo. Herbo. Yeah. Which is, yeah, man. Swervo is very solid. Yeah, it's, it, it was more solid than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not hating on him in any way, shape, or form. I just, I've never listened to a whole project by him before. Mm-hmm. And this one, I didn't want to stop listening to. Yeah. Like, it was good. Shit, balling like I'm Kobe was dope, too. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, Harry Tubbs. Yeah, man. Harry Tubbs. She so, is all over the place. Yeah, I and, and I'm leaning more towards the drug thing because it's just so irrational. And what's even more than that, did you you didn't listen to the whole Queen clip I sent you the Queen radio clip? It was like thirty minutes, man. I so listened to I skipped around the and... her people that's around her. In the in the little snippet, they were saying Nikki is the best rapper alive. Yeah, and I'm like, where? <laughs> Bitch, where? Man, ooh, <laughs> hey, man, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> But, but you notice on that clip though, when whenever they were saying something good about her, mm-hmm. like, yeah, cut his mic up. Whenever yeah. they said anything bad about her, cut his mic off. Cut his mic off. Now she said I that's mean, that's her humor. That's her dry humor. Nah, she was actually cutting their mics off. Yeah, I don't. It, it, it's <laughs> very rational, and it's like the team around you is like telling you, yeah, go go. And I know any publicity is good publicity, but it's like you too seasoned in the game for this. Yeah, like you too. Like to be in that category of a Jay Z, of an Eminem, when you get to that stage in the game, I don't think that's where she's going though. I think she's going. She said, "I'm the female Jay." I feel like she's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. There'll never be another Jay Z in any form, <laughs> ever. Oh no, man! Since the Carters came out, I feel like Jay Z is the female Jay, but. <laughs> Past that, we're what? Go. <laughs> Wait a minute! What? What did you just say? Boy, you just firing on all cylinders today. Matt Black, everybody. Matt Black. Matt Black. Oh my God! <laughs> you snap. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Look, so say has been going hard though. So look, right? But um, I think she's going more for the Mariah Carey <clears throat> than the Jay Z, like Supreme Diva. Like, walk up to New York, <sighs> Times Square, New Year's Eve with Dick Clark and then not say shit and just walk off. It's like <clears throat> diva status. See, and that shit flew in the 80s and 90s, but when we can see you all the time, yeah, it's like, who do you think you are? Yeah, you can't, you can't be Mariah Carey. You can't be Mariah Carey and Jay-Z at the same time. Yeah. And it make me think about, she named this album Queen and has been doing all of this these peasantries right <laughs> and then you look at the opposite end of the spectrum you have ti king mm-hmm. he's actually doing king shit very astute top shelf you know high mm-hmm. first class all the way yeah right he gets in his troubles but he never breaks from the mode of king yeah when you hear him and see him yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he's still crazy as hell and shoot your face off, but he's king. Yeah. yeah. He, he's in every way. Yeah. Every day, in every way. So, I, I, it's not being the self-proclaiming it that makes it bad. It's just that when you say that and then you act like this, like, it's a baby. Yeah. It's a baby. stormy thing. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Like, right. now, it, even if you joking, it's not funny. No, see, because I guess she didn't say she had beef. The media said. Oh, she had right, 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 and right. Then she okay. just fed into it. Oh, you know. But you got to clear that up, know, man. So I feel like Travis Scott got the Kardashian girl. What's her name? Um, what is it? Kendall uh, Jenner. Is it Kendall? Kylie. 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 Yeah. All right. So he got her, mm-hmm. and she's a powerful force. And then they got a baby together. So right, she's like gonna be the first billionaire Kardashian. Yeah, yeah. like she's on the way to be the first billionaire under thirty or some shit. Like the first female billionaire under thirty. Right, something crazy you know, like, like that. Some kind of ridiculous number. And she um, 
She said, yeah, buy this pass. Buy the pass to come see me and the baby at the show. Like, Ain't nothing okay. wrong with that. Like, like, but you fucking with rappers. Why would Nas say... Buy buy a ticket to another rapper's show. But no, it's the I same thing as say, buy a ticket to another rapper show. That's the same thing as them. as Drake plugging the album or Wayne posting the album. And it's like you doing combinations. You buy concert tickets, you get the album. Yeah. Like man, this is just how you gotta sell records now. Isn't like, that what Nicki Minaj did though? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All yeah. right, and then she shitting on him for doing the exact same thing. See, and I wonder if Queen would have went number one. Will we be hearing this whole rant about packaging with album sales and merch sales and ticket sales? Hey, I mean, shit. If it went number one, would we have heard this from her? No, not at all, because it was number one. All we would have heard was, I got the number one. I am the queen. I told you I was the queen. I'm number one. I broke Aretha record. Yeah. Hey, rest, rest in, in peace, peace to the queen of soul, Aretha yeah. Franklin. <laughs> yeah, man. Jesus, yeah. man. <laughs> I, I just went hard, but you just like... <laughs> You shocked us both right yeah. there for a second. Like we did <laughs> pause like, oh, like, God. Damn, I think we went too far. It gets, it's, it, but it gets worse and worse the more you think about it. Like, yeah. Jesus, man. And that's coming from somebody who is a strong fan of the lyrical ability of Harry Tubbs. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Tubbs. Oh, man. Oh, they going to kill us if they hear it. Oh, man. <laughs> if they hear it, they're going to kill us. <laughs> but even more than being killed, I hope more people say Harry Tubbs. Yeah. That's going to be man. great. If we can get, y if we can get you Rainbow to say Dan Rainbow Dan and, and Harry Tubbs, oh, man. we all win. Yeah, man. All right, so speaking of all these number one records and, and Harry Tubbs and people who paved the way, Michael Jackson's Thriller, is no longer yeah. the biggest selling album. It's um, who is it now? It's the Eagles. It's the Eagles. Right? Yeah. I don't think that's fair because it's a greatest hits album. Oh, it's the greatest hits album. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. I mean, Hotel California is one of them songs that I know all the words. Bruh, to. but what album was that song on? It wasn't on a greatest hits album. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thriller is not a greatest, put hits out a greatest hits album. Greatest hits album. Yeah, like you can't dethrone a uh, Thriller on a technicality. Yeah, that's that's like, just crazy. All of my greatest songs are better than that one album you put out. Right, like of course they are. The the it's, it's all of your greatest songs. So these are songs that were recorded over a four year period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael Jackson created one album. <laughs> yeah, and y'all just smoked them. I mean, is that really news though? Like, it's like. The whole Michael that's why Jordan I brought it up. LeBron James. That's like, why I brought it up because it's like, because I mean, Dr. J was the greatest, mm -hmm. and Magic Johnson was the greatest. Mm -hmm. and then Michael Jordan was the, the greatest. greatest. Now and then Kobe, Kobe Bryant, Bryant was the, the greatest. greatest. Now LeBron James like, is the greatest. Of yeah. course, like records are made to be broken. Drink water, kids. Yeah, uh, man, more water, more water. As you can tell, we shout out to Mick Jenkins. Hey, as you can tell. It's very hot in here, and he's in. In there's light. Light is hot. Yeah. Yeah, man. We are. <clears throat> we are actually in here. We're not just like talking into the camera microphone. We're actually recording ourselves. We are on a, this shit. We are on a set. Yeah. Yeah. So we're it hurts trying to me. keep it soundproof as possible mm -hmm. for y'all. We 18 episodes in. I hope y'all would have realized that by now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know that this is episode 18. <laughs> No, no, no. If you don't know that we're actually oh, engineering we... the sound and making it sound better for you oh, right yeah. now. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, they know something. Yeah. Man. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that's valid. I'm not buying that. Uh, Thriller is still the biggest selling album in the U.S. Uh, I'm not going... I'm, that's not... That's not... I'm on Team Harry Tubbs. <laughs> Go Harry. <laughs> <laughs> What else we got, man? What else do we got? Oh, uh, they said uh, Aretha Franklin uh, didn't leave a will. Well, for real, though. What's up? Shouts out to Harriet Tubman. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> the real, real one. Harriet Tubman. The real one. <laughs> for being herself and really getting... She only got like 70 people out of captivity. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was a lot more. I mean, seeing but Steven... Still, 70 people is still a lot. Seeing Steven on Django opened my eyes to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Like, Steven was content being where he was. He didn't yeah. want to leave Candyland. Well, I mean, he, there was a lot of people that wanted to leave, though. 
Mm-hmm. Right, but just, I mean, what? But no I wonder internet, what the real no number. Phones, no, you know. I wonder what the real number was of slaves that actually wanted to get out and the Stevens. Because the mm-hmm. Stevens kept a lot of slaves from getting away. Yeah. You know they were out there tricking. Yeah. And that's a, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, um, rest in peace to Robin Leach. Yeah. They passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, Robin Leach, I ain't going to say he meant a lot to me, but Robin Leach made it real. Like, he, he took us in and showed us how successful you could be and how much money you can make. I remember when we was like 15, 16, you told me what the Rob report was. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what that was. Mm-hmm. You know, and like, yeah, so I could see how Robin Leach meant a lot to you just because you've always been into, look at this $100,000 watch. Look at this $500,000 car. Back when Ferraris were a buck twenty-five. And I was always you know in the DuPont saying? registry. Yeah, DuPont registry, the Rob report. You always, you know, said you would bring these things to me. And I'm like, what is that? Mm-hmm. Oh, like I was all in the Nautica and Polo and shit I could possibly afford at mm-hmm. this moment. You know, but you was like, look at this helicopter. Illusions of grandeur. <laughs> yeah. But uh, rest in peace to Robin Leach, man. Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. He is immortalized in one of our greatest uh, rappers who is now deceased and notorious, B.I.G. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He made the change from a common thief to up close and personal with Robin Leach. Now, does he actually have an episode? No, I looked for it. Uh, no. I wish he did. I wish we could have got Robin Leach and Biggie yeah, sitting that down. That would have definitely That would have been the coldest. So I feel like we got to go back, you know, to John McCain because this week's cover art is the John McCain, Sarah Palin, uh, yeah, you had to point that out to me. Yeah, that was the political ticker, right? The flyer. Yeah, the flyer. Yeah, yeah. Like, people I had no clue. Realize what that is. Yeah, that's what this week's cover art is. Is John McCain? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, like I said, if it was anybody else, I don't think Obama would have won. That's an interesting. That's an interesting thought. But because who else would it have been? If it was Obama, Trump, would o- I, I think Trump probably would have beat Obama. Yeah, because Trump was definitely hotter. Mm-hmm. In 08 than he was in 2016. And then he basically won by talking about his opponents. Yeah. And if you're talking about Obama. Yeah. You're talking about a black man as a white man. Yeah. Yeah. He would have yeah. beat Obama. Yeah. yeah. And he would have been eight years younger. That's why I say I don't see anybody. If Trump doesn't get impeached and chooses to run again, I don't see anybody beating him. Yeah. Like, that's scary. Because that that's how bad... Because Kanye was talking is. about it. Yeah. But he's become one of Trump's minions. Did he though? So how can the minion beat the evil doctor, right? I don't, man, I think Kanye is a creative and he says what pops into his mind. Yes, Because that's he does. what people that create things do. Like what he said on the song, Ecstasy. Ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> My new favorite song. I think everybody was thinking it. I think everybody was thinking that Kanye was thinking it. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody thought in a million years that he would vocalize. I didn't, I wasn't really into yay, but that song (laughs) ecstasy, man, ain't to repackage that and make that a bonus song. Cause I listened to that song 64 times yesterday. (laughs) What? He said, what, what, what? Oh, yeah. Screw the French open, by the way. Oh yeah! Screw I, them! I was gonna make that the cover art. You ooh, that's what I was. Should at. do two of them. Do another one. Ooh. Such a beautiful form. The human body. See, this is the result of uh, when you take a uh, Harriet Tubman with the biggest, strongest, blackest man on the plantation. Terry you get. Cruz. You get. We haven't spoken about Terry Crews. We we apologize to Terry. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Hey Terry, hey. how you doing, Terry? Hey Terry, Terry, yeah. But uh, you take the biggest, blackest slaves and the uh, Harriet Tubman, and you mix them up, and you get a Serena Williams, a Shaquille O'Neal, a LeBron James. Yeah. Now that I don't think LeBron James is a slave. I think LeBron James is an Aboriginal pe- person. Yeah, because he is like bigger, stronger, like, and faster. He looked than like the Aborigines people. I don't know if that's funny. It's or uh, not funny. Uh, it's funny. It's, yeah, it's a comparison. Yeah, screw the French Open, by the way. Yeah, man. Yeah, screw the French Open. I just like how that sounds. Screw the French Open. Uh, I they, don't understand how 
How this shit keeps happening? Like, and it's only happening to black people. Like, how is this only happening to black people? You got, you got workplaces saying that black women can't have dreadlocks because uh -huh. you can get fired for having dreadlocks. Right? They point. didn't they expel the girl? They expelled the girl for having braids in her oh, hair. Oh, you know what? Let me tell you a story. Because when I read that, that hit home. Because you know what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, for those of you who don't know, I went to Westside. The name of my school was Westside, right? It's a Christian school, private school. That was my grammar school, right? So, graduating class of 12 people. Yeah, 12 people. Me. And I know, like, I'm amazingly, I'm amazingly developed to have graduated with only 12 people. And the other 11 people are doing amazing things. <laughs> Shout out to Tamisha online, man. She's dope. Check out her music. But anyway, back to my story, right? So when I was in grammar school, I had an Afro. I rocked the Afro for a long time. Um, so one day I got the bright idea that I wanted braids and my mama braided my hair, right? So I went to school the next day. And the principal came and pulled me out of class and told me that I looked like a thug. Now, this is a black woman. Mm -hmm. Pulled me out of my classroom, told me I looked like a thug, and made me go in the bathroom and take my braids out of my head right then and there. Oh, wow. Now, this is, this is me as a fifth grade boy. Yeah. So, what's fifth grade? Fifth grade is 11? It's like 10, 11. Yeah. Now. So, I'm 11 years old. I don't know how the braids got in my head, let alone how to take them out. Yeah. So, I'm in the bathroom crying, running my head under the water to <laughs> loosen the hair up to pull the braids out. Yeah. So, I am well familiar with being told that my hairstyle is unacceptable. It's, it's not That's right, crazy, and it shouldn't man. be happening. It shouldn't be happening. Yeah, man. Just like, How come you can't wear a cat suit on a tennis court? Like... That's the most flexible shit. Like you should be able to move around. So you got to wear a skirt. Right. If nudity was acceptable, I imagine most athletes would play naked. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, besides, like, football players. Yeah. But I mean, like, no, nah, I don't want to. Guarding do that somebody in the post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Post, yeah, po shorts. post up. Yeah. <laughs> You you can dunk on me all day. I'm just I'm just gonna turn around and put your back to the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be out of bounds. Oh man! <laughs> so look look look. All right. According to the French Tennis Federation president Bernard Gudicelli, yeah. the tournament is pushing a new dress code to regulate the uniforms of players. He said, "I think that sometimes we've gone too far." Hmm. I don't understand. I don't understand how you can go too far. So Gudicelli, right, what, about, what about Tinker Hatfield when he dressed? Um... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Gudicelli also said, referring to Serena's cat suit, um, he said it will no longer be accepted. One must respect the game and the place. I don't understand what that means. I don't understand what that means either. How is that disrespecting the game? Yeah, like she's she is the game though. Like when you think tennis, you think, you think Serena, Serena Williams. Williams. Maybe that's the problem. Like, what? No matter what she got on, she's still gonna be better than everybody. And she's yeah. gonna bust your face <laughs> open with that backhand, man. What? Like, yeah, man. Her serves is coming in at like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, she hitting fastballs, man. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Serena Williams is one of the greatest athletes that I've ever seen play mm -hmm. a game in my life. Yeah. People were saying that she was the greatest athlete ever, and then women was like, are you with me? Like, come on, man. Just, why can't she be one of the greatest? Like, she's definitely one of the greatest athletes of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, there's, you got guys like LeBron, you mm -hmm. know, like who have been a peak physical shape their whole career. I would think you know? the best athlete of all time would have to be like a boxer, like Muhammad Ali. I mean, even Muhammad Ali went through. Like you have to have the greatest amount of conditioning. Stuck. It would have to be a soccer player or a boxer. Yeah, soccer players go hard. Yeah. You know? That's what I imagine. But, so somebody like uh, Ronaldo or yeah, Messi uh, or Messi or Pele, Pele or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, somebody. Because, man, that footwork, man, mm -hmm. I could watch... I could watch soccer highlights all day over baseball <laughs> highlights. I want to get a group of soccer players and have them all stand in the line at Westside Footwork on camera. <laughs> <laughs> have 
have a have a West Side footwork on camera at footwork and cut, put soccer players on while I can. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> that that'd go hard. Yeah. Yeah. But screw the French Open. Nike responds. Um, you can take the superhero out of her costume, but you can never take away her superpowers. Uh, take that, Frenchie. 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 <laughs> yeah, but screw the French Open. I'm gonna say that as many times as I can fit it in. You know, see, I I feel like you can say that as many times as you want. It still means nothing to me because I wasn't watching it anyway. I was, you know, I was. Like unless it came on like Channel Seven or it comes on Channel Two or Channel Seven or something, right? Like, um, when she plays Channel Five, I think NBC. Like one of them. So you yeah, didn't watch so, Venus's comeback after the whole car crash and everything? Nah. Oh man. I, See, tennis is one of the most exciting games. I will. I play tennis before mm-hmm. I watch tennis. Mm-hmm. I probably could play whereas, tennis now. Whereas I would, I like to watch soccer, but I also, I know I can't play a whole sixty minute game of soccer. Mm-hmm. You know, like I know I can't do that. Oh hell no! You'll, You'll die. Play. You'll die. But I know that I'm better than some people <laughs> that I play tennis. I'm better than somebody. You know, at tennis. <laughs> yeah. You know, but at soccer. I know I'm not better than anybody. We got to talk about this. This goes back to how the media controls what you see, right? I don't even know these people. This is the woman who started the Me Too movement, and that is an underage boy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? That is something, man. So I wanted to, like, what does this mean, though? Like, she started the movement. The movement is alive now. Well, no, I mean, as a victim, though, Mm -hmm. you tend to do the things that have been done to you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, she, you know, she was touched, and she, she touched somebody because, in her mind, it's still okay. You know, and that's the problem, is that, once your mind gets open to something in your moral compass, it becomes okay because it's happened to you. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying I so get that now. Yeah. She's definitely wrong for laying around shirtless with a 17 year old boy in the bed. Yeah. You know it's no, saying? it's no way around that. But in her mind, you know, me too or not, mm-hmm. it's still something that happens. You know what I'm saying? So she's still a victim. Can't, can't just, Take away her whole victim. Oh, no, 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 no. For her yeah. being a perpetrator. That would be just wrong. Yeah. That would be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I didn't, yeah, I don't, I didn't know anything about that story, yeah. but she's wrong for that. Yeah. But at the same time, there's therapy out there to, to help people who go through these things mm-hmm. or to have these mm-hmm. urges and these wants, you know, yeah. like, and I think it's, it's, it's bad either way. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, man. If I was a if I was a underage boy and a grown woman, like, nah, man, yeah. that's not cool. It's not cool, but you know, boys wait for that, right? Like, you'll you like it, but that don't make it okay. Especially if you like a jock, yeah. You know, you're a star quarterback, and you got a 21 year old girlfriend taking you to the prom, right? You know? Or the teacher passing you through class and giving you blowjobs and all that. Yeah, you know, like it's blowjobs. I mean, it's still it's it's wrong. It shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. But you know, I mean, <laughs> no. nothing, nothing. So yeah, you know. I was laughing at at Donny. Uh, what Donny do now? Donny started a petition. I guess is this something good? He's starting a petition to get ESPN to air the national anthem ceremony. Is that good? I've. <laughs> <laughs> I I really want to know. I want to have, cause I I am a I have a minimal knowledge of football, you know. <laughs> and I want to have a conversation with Donald Trump about football, cause I you want to know how much he knows about the game. Yeah, I yeah. don't think he knows anything about the game of football. I do. I don't think he cares about football. He might. He might I mean, actually. <laughs> I mean, cause I, above all things, you can call him a bigot. You can call him racist. Above all things, I think Donald Trump is truly American, and yeah. I think football is an American game. Yeah, 
So that's why I think he but may see, be a football see, fan. See, when I think Donald Trump, I think the golf. I think tennis. I think oh, equestrian. Mm. You know, I don't think... Equestrian. Yeah, you know, horse races and shit. Yeah. I don't think football, baseball, basketball, you know. Right, you think like uh, lacrosse. Lacrosse. Cricket. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, like... The queen sports. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't see him as a hoorah. American chugger, what, 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 what's it called when you punch a hole in the beer and you shotgun the beer? That was called. Yeah, yeah. I don't see him doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't see him getting beer on his two thousand dollars shirt. <laughs> you know, can't mess up that tube, baby. Yeah, that tube. Yeah, yeah. You know? I don't see him out there doing that. I and I feel like. There, there's no place for politics in sports, you know? Shit. There's always been politics in sports. I Boxing guess, is guess, politics. There's no place for politicians in sports. Like, politicians, the people right. who are here to make make right. sure our roads are paved and our water supply is clean and our electricity but I don't know. is coming from a secure, safe place and it's not going to blow up a nuclear plant. I don't think they have a say in what goes on in Major League Sports. Now, Major League Sports, yeah. But mm-hmm. I like when the politicians speak up about collegiate athletics. Yeah, how like Obama was talking about mm-hmm. if he could, if he had the power, he would change the brackets in the Sweet 16. Change and, the playoff format. And, yeah. yeah. You know, like That's cool because, you know, there's... Like if the president wanted to get the athletes paid somehow, I'm all for that. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? But as far as getting in on the messy shit, you yeah. know, and sipping the tea... Hey, like, come on, man. You're the fucking president, man. Yeah, I guess that's the problem. You shouldn't be out here sipping the tea. Yeah. There's you know? more important things for you to do. There's very important things for you to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, leave North Korea alone. Leave Russia alone. Mm-hmm. Like, leave just, Rosie O'Donnell alone. Yeah, man. Like, yeah. Help the people in Flint. Help the people in Puerto Rico. Yeah. You know, like help the people in Louisiana. Yeah, do whatever you say you're going to do to the people of Chicago and make the streets of Chicago safer. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like, there's man. presidential shit to do. Like, we are sweaty, man. We are man. super sweaty in here, man. Yeah, uh, man. It's going to look nasty on camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the nasty podcast. Uh, <laughs> Episode 18 of the nasty podcast. <laughs> This is the grown podcast. The grown podcast, man. Hey, we in this motherfucker looking like we doing what grown folks do. Yeah. But we we're ain't, not. We're just talking. Man. Yeah. We ain't got <laughs> too much else. We got the uh the California thing. California is reducing uh, the yeah. marijuana convictions. Yeah, so man. That's that's, cool, that's a step man. in the right direction, and I'm happy for that. Yeah, man. So many people are gonna get out of jail and be able to get a job. Mm-hmm. You know? I was thinking about felonies. Like, felonies shouldn't dangle over your head unless you like, a perv or a murderer. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't. And I feel like not even all murderers. You know, like, if you're in jail for cutting your husband's cheating, beating dick off Mm -hmm. and shoving it in his mouth because he's been beating on you for the last 20 years, Mm -hmm. then, yeah, you you probably shouldn't have a felony. Like, if, if you do seven years or whatever for that, like, it shouldn't linger over your head. Like, I don't think you should go to jail. I mean, I don't think jobs should have the right to ask you if you have a felony on your job application. Well, certain jobs. You know, like, I mean, a certain felonies, I say. Yeah, like, teachers mm-hmm. shouldn't be perps. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Old, uh, CNAs shouldn't be murderers yeah, or domestic like abusers. Bank workers or anybody working the cash register shouldn't have gone to jail for robbing a bank. Right. <laughs> you know. Right, or, common sense things. Yeah. But right. the guy who has a felony for child support yeah, shouldn't have to disclose that at a job interview. Yeah. You know. Uh-huh. Right. But I mean, they're going to search your background, but mm-hmm. it shouldn't matter. Is right. what I'm right. thinking. Right. Like, it shouldn't matter that you got a felony for child support if you're trying to deliver some pizza. Yeah. Because if the goal uh-huh. is rehabilitation, you got to be able to make some money. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Because if you don't, if you're not making money legally, you're going to make money illegally. And if you don't make money. take somebody. Right. You're going to end up taking something from somebody. Yeah. Somebody who might need it more than you. Exactly. And even though you don't want to, you have no other alternative. Yeah. Mm Because no one will give you a job. Yeah. Yeah. So 
That's just something I was thinking about. But, uh, I wish they made radiators for the summer that just... <laughs> oh, it's called air conditioners. <laughs> no, <laughs> silent. Like, oh, air conditioners. Well, central loud. air is silent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> radiators for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this has been by far the most entertained I've been while doing this podcast, boy. I've been rolling for the whole thing. I know my oh, laugh man. probably gonna sound real ugly. But trust me, ladies and gentlemen, I had a ball. They can't right? sound worse than Harry Tubbs' laugh this week. Oh, the Harry Tubbs laugh will be... Uh, Harry Tubbs is one of them names. It's very funny the first time you say it. It's less funny the more you say it, but you won't stop saying it because it's not funny. Because it's not, it's not what you think it is. It's not, <laughs> yeah. Like, I just see, like, a Kohler showroom <laughs> full of, like... Bathroom displays. <laughs> <laughs> and all the tubs just got the hair, used in them. And the Harry Tub bathroom outlet <laughs> store. <laughs> uh, we got to get in. We got to get out of here, man. I got a box of Drano over here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the new single from Harry Tubbs, Drano. <laughs> Let's rap, man. I'm hot. <laughs> I'm hot as fuck. Ready man. to rap? Yeah. Oh. We got stickers now. Mm, no, we don't. We we are going to go on a sticker campaign. So if you see a sticker somewhere up in your favorite neighborhood. It's our sticker. Take a picture of it and tag us on Instagram. At the Faculty Lounge, at Anonymous, yeah. at Chicago Fog. We're going to be going sticker stupid. What? It's sticker gonna stupid. It's going to be fun. We're going to get sued. But we're Hopefully we don't gonna... get sued. We're definitely working on some nice pieces of merch for y'all. Mm-hmm. These stickers aren't that. Yep. These are just promotional yep. stickers we putting up. So if you see one, take a picture of it and tag us in it. Let us know that y'all listening, man. So in conclusion, we got stickers. Yeah. Not for you, though. <laughs> not for you. Just, <laughs> not for you. Just for you to look at. Just for you to look at. Not but for if you, to you have. walk up to us on the streets and acknowledge us, we might give you one. I might stick a sticker on you. <laughs> on your forehead. On your face. <laughs> All right. But I've I've but, been John Jay. But no stickers for Rainbow Dan. No stickers for Harry Tubbs. <laughs> <laughs> I am Elton. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I wasn't Elton today. Today I was Matt Black. Matt was Black, everybody. Matt Black today. Matt Black. <laughs> All right. I, I've been John Jay. Welcome, Matt Black. <laughs> it's great to have you on board. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> that baby is obviously Matt Turquoise. Out of baby. Go and give him the sign off, man. Yeah, man. It's time to get back to the studio. Double studio. <laughs> <laughs>